Okay, we're back here inside the Cube Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we are here live in New York City where it is Big Data Week, and we are expanding all of our coverage to look at the business value of big data, looking at the, the uh, analytics side of the insights, and then under the, under the hood, looking at all the technologies from ingesting all the data, managing all that data, computing all calculations on that data, to ultimately looking at the impact of business and vertical markets and insights, et cetera. I'm joined here at Efron Khan, SVP, Chief Technology Officer at Sybase SAP. So, um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, pleasure to be here. So we love SAP, uh, theCUBE started in 2010, it's now our third season of going to events, and we've been at three straight Sapphires, uh, where you know we've covered SAP in, in, in multi-day format, like here in theCUBE, and, and watching SAP evolve was awesome, and then the year, second season of theCUBE, they made the big uh, Sidebase acquisition, which created a lot of conversation, but at the time was an early signal of essentially big data. Mm -hmm. um, and last year at uh, Sapphire, I had a chance to talk to Bill McDermott uh, and, and um, Schnabe, uh, Jim Schnabe, about big data. Um, and SAP kind of looked at me like, well, we, yeah, I'm like, you're a big data company, SAP. You have <laughs> Sybase, you have in memory, you have HANA, you have mobility, you're showing analytics. I mean, it's a the poster child of everything that's being talked about here at Hadoop World in terms of business value analytics. Absolutely. But SAP wasn't taking any credit for it. So I asked Schnabe, I said, why don't you just market around big data? And, he, and his reaction was, in a very German way, well, it's kind of hypish. So, you know, SAP, you know, very professional company, so I understand that, but truly, it's a big data company. Can you explain to the folks out there um, what I just said in terms of how SAP really is a big data company? When you look at what the startups are patching together here in the open source community, you guys kind of have that. So sure. explain to the folks out there what SAP has and include the side piece. Sure, so firstly I'm appreciative of you acknowledging the, uh, the big data credentials of SAP. I mean it's worthwhile pointing out, of course, SAP is one of those stealth companies in terms of the impact that it has on the world's economy. I mean, if you take a look at SAP ERP, for instance, I mean, it's a pioneer, of course, behind the whole package application movement. More than 60% of the world's GDP will at some point in time touch an SAP piece of application infrastructure or, or, uh, or applications per se. So that in itself gives it a massive amount of, uh, of spread in terms of the pervasiveness of SAP. Now, SAP over the years has uh, driven itself by certain standards, okay, and those standards are enterprise grade. So whereas a lot of the startups here, and it's, it's fantastic seeing all these companies congregate in this location, but a lot of them are quite somewhat new to the market. They're trying to find their feet. They're trying to figure out exactly where they stand. SAP, of course, has, you know, it's tread the, tread the path of a uh, school of hard knocks, so to speak, mm -hmm. okay, right? So it knows exactly what it takes to have enterprise grade and mission critical support. So SAP, in a nutshell, from a big data perspective, A, has huge levels of systems of data, or systems of record, rather, storing business processes that have been around for many years across many lines of business and across in the classic ERP. And now with the SAP acquisition, A, they get an acceleration into mobility, but B, also some fantastic foundations in database and database technology. And that wasn't really talked about much during the acquisition, although you know, on the inside the, inside the ropes, you know, people understood that database impact. But talk about what's changed with SAP, with SA, uh, Sybase, with SAP, in the database area specifically, because since the acquisition, you've seen the explosion of open source scale out. Um, HBase, you got MongoDB, a bunch of variety of other databases cropping up. Um, and we've been saying on theCUBE here, it's not a mutually exclusive situation. Um, other companies like IBM and, and HP recently, we were on this morning when we were at IBM earlier in the week at IOD, and, and they're embracing the Hadoop and the early emerging ecosystems. Sure. And they're putting their solutions on top because they have that enterprise grade kind of level. So, so talk about the role of SAP with uh, Sybase just over the past uh, 18 months, what's changed, if anything, and how have you guys integrated in, considering this thermal growth of emerging open source big data stuff? Sure, it's a great question. So if you look at Sybase, two years now, since approaching two years since the acquisition, left somewhat uh, independent, but then at the same time supporting the parent company's uh, desires for business applications, right? So firstly, the transactional database engine, the flagship database engine of Sybase is ASC, the Adaptive Server Enterprise. And over the course of the last two years, that's migrated along the lines of not just supporting custom applications, but also now supporting business suite applications as well. 
But broadly speaking, where SAP is now leveraging Sybase is really the technology know-how, 25, 30 plus years of technology know-how in database and database technology. So where we have now the, the, the flagship product set of the database company SAP, if I refer to it as a database company now, <laughs> is really along Thanks the lines. Thanks you guys. <laughs> exactly. Along the, well actually even independent yeah, of Sybase. Yeah, they have database, yeah. The, the, the real growth really in terms of innovation and, and market opportunity is through this new innovation of in-memory. Now SAP has made substantial investments in in-memory compute, we have a product, of course, uh, called HANA, which is uh, not only taken the market by storm, but also, also a lot of the traditional vendors out there who are now looking at SAP thinking, well, where do they suddenly come from? And now they're having to almost scurry around to try and rebrand themselves as becoming in-memory database companies as well. So I think Sybase, over the contributions over the last two years, supporting business applications by having a, a first-class database offering underneath those business apps, and secondly, contributing towards the innovations, kind of bi-directional innovation between in-memory computing, Sybase's know-how in that space, helping SAP evolve its own pro you know, pla platform offering in in-memory computing as well. So you guys have been ahead of the curve, and, and we recognize that. So yeah, two years ago, was mobility was the big theme at Sapphire and with SAP, and Shinabe talked about the growth strategy, and then the next year, um, you bought success factors. It was kind of bolted in at the last minute, but you know, so then it's cloud. So you got mobile and cloud. Now you have social and you have connected internet of things. This whole nother new era, I'm sure next year, uh, Jonathan, Mar uh, Jonathan Becker will have some sort of new, new marketing uh, angle there. But okay, talk about what that means, because now you have to integrate it in. You have business by design, these other environments where cloud is critical, but it's kind of an older definition. So well, the question is, not that it's wrong, just it was implemented kind of before this kind of disruption was happening. Um, what is the current plan for the cloud and the, and the Han and the big data as emerging techniques that look similar are emerging? So I mean, first and foremost, I mean, we always are too quick to uh, literally write the obituary of everything that's preceded big data or whatever the trend is of the day. Yeah, yeah that's Frankly short. speaking, I mean, SAP strategy is driven on three, three levels, right? So firstly, there's an on-premise business, which will be around for many, many years to come. There's an on-demand business, and the on-demand business really is, uh, is heading in that SaaS more importantly on the cloud-based side of things, and of course there's the on-device on business, right, which is a whole mobility drive. So across all of those modalities of on-device, rather going backwards, on-device, on-demand um, uh, on and on-premise, on we are putting equal levels of evaluation and, and value into the, into the business to evolve. So you said success factors becomes a cornerstone behind applications, HC HCM, human capital management type of things within the cloud. As far as SAP's underlining transformation is taking place in the database tier, HANA, which is our in-memory compute platform, really it beyond, beyond what we can actually even articulate today because the market really hasn't quite caught on yet. Internally, we have the buzz, we know what, it can, what it's Give able to achieve. Give us some taste of some of the benchmarks because we've seen some numbers at SAP I want you to share some anecdotal performance increases because I've seen things that uh, I've heard and seen, uh, heard numbers saying, oh, you know, five minutes, five seconds, five days, five, five minutes. So talk about some of the order of magnitude performance gains that HANA sure. has been implemented. Before I do that, I mean, the anatomy of what HANA as a platform provides you with. First and foremost, it gives you a unification of uh, OLP, o OLAP type environments, so the analytical type environments, but also OLTP. Now, some of the OLTP testing, in fact, last week, uh, TechEd in, uh, in Las Vegas, we announced some numbers based upon some performance benchmarking. We're able to achieve 1.5 million transactions per second using HANA as a persistent store with solid state devices, of course, but 1.5 million transactions per second in HANA. Now, if you combine that with some of the analytical capabilities, you're able to minimize the amount of latency that you incur between a transaction occurring and then being able to do you know, very deep analytics, very deep analytics where the data actually resides. So it's phenomenal, you know, it's, it's not just driven by the pure transaction performance, it's also driven by the levels of, of insight you can drive. I can attest that you guys have done a great job on, on the performance side, and I, I, love, I love the strategy of SAP, I gotta say, I think you guys are very relevant, and that's why I said I think you were big data before, actually built out big data value proposition and executing it at, sc at scale and grade, kind of before the whole market, but again, that's a whole different discussion. Um, the conversation I want to shift to now is in this ecosystem of Hadoop, you guys have some announcements, but relative to this emerging marketplace, how do you guys look at integrating in some of the Hadoop stuff? I mean, you have deals, um, have you announced some deals with Cloudera? Yep. Can you just go through some of the, your, your, your presence here at the ecosystem? Sure, so given 
as you say, SAP is not exactly a new market entrant into big managing big data. Some of the assets that we have uh, from the Sybase side, we have Sybase IQ, one of the first columnar-based databases in the market. There are three philosophies that we held for IQ in terms of integration with Hadoop. Number one, you can have the classic uh, connector. So Cloudera has connectors, of course. We can have the pull model being able to interoperate with, the, with Cloudera from an ecosystem perspective. Number two, we have the ability to be able to, to actually federate our access to Cloudera HDFS type file systems and be able to map table spaces across to them. And the third one is, is actually being able to use the database itself to be able to push processing down and actually do native map and reduce using SQL-like extensions natively within the database. So native in database Hadoop type processing. So our extension really is, is to work with the, the market incumbents, the big market leaders, Cloudera, Hortonworks, et cetera, but also build a bundling so the customer's not left with all the heavyweight lifting. Drive that in innovation in terms of you know, the interoperability. How is it that you can get, say, the business objects data services? We have this uh, ability to be able to farm, federate out, out, out type of queries using business objects as well. So we have a very comprehensive bundling, packaging, but also a technology grain as well. In the last few minutes we have here, I want to talk about some of the, some of the uh, in the weeds questions around connectors and other things, and ben benchmarks in particular. But let's talk about connectors. The strategy for Hadoop, for most people, hey, we'll build a connector and suck data around and move data around. And that's, I guess, okay if you're moving it and you, want, and you have you know what you're moving it for, but it's not the answer. I, uh, MapReduce in the data sets themselves is, seems to be the platform power. of choice. So do you agree with that statement, and how does that relate to SAP? Yeah, I think the, the, the question really comes down to the specifics of the implementation. So yeah, at the moment, because these things are being conceived as almost bolt-ons to existing infrastructure, you're having to deal with these connectors. But ultimately, the, the goal should be to push processing as close to the data as possible. Now, if you're going to have to federate out every single time to, to a HDFS or Cloudera or whatever, Hortonworks, you're going to minimize, or rather you're going to incur more overhead. So overall, you could arg argue and say, well, if you could well petition the workloads and have map and reduce type functions in the store itself, that would be the most optimum. And in, f in fact, from an SAP point of view, we're driving towards that. We're driving towards having the ability in, in for example, a HANA-based platform to segregate the workload and being able to do the unification of all types of workloads within one single store. The word unification is being kicked around again. It's like it's the tech industry's favorite word. You know, f almost as good as big data, unified communications, unified storage, unified big data. Um, we keep watching that buzzword and that hype, but it's, re it's really relevant. But okay, on that point, I agree with you by the way on the whole uh, moving, the, uh, processing down to the, to the data. Uh, and a lot of other people do as well, so um, uh, accurate there, I think. Um, but benchmarks, so here at the show, we had an entrepreneur come on from Aerospike, um, uh, Brian Bolkowski, uh, really smart tech, uh, tech alpha geek, and he's got this unique in-flash database, and we're talking around, it's like, who's got benchmarks? So we, no one th at this show yet has released any kind of framework for how to think about performance. Mm -hmm. And obviously you guys nailed this with HANA, uh, Brian's company, Aerospike, has nailed it, MapBars did a terror sort. Apparently no one else showed up, so they're the world ch world champions. Uh, I saw that, 58 <laughs> seconds or whatever 58 it was. 58 seconds, you know, terror sort's interesting, but you know, it's good, but no one else is doing any benchmarks. So the question is to you, from a, from a knowing what you know at Sybase and what you've worked on and what you manage, you know, you're managing a lot of, you know, big iron, big software, uh, and, and, and distributed software, all that great stuff. What benchmarks should this industry be looking at for big data? Benchmarks in themselves, I think even traditional benchmarks, the TPC type of benchmarks, the Transaction Processing Council, they are effectively are workloads that are driven by a certain profile of user and a certain profile of transaction. Now, uh, you're absolutely right. There is no in-memory specific benchmark. There's no in-memory specific workload right now. You end up having to balance up, well, what are you exactly trying to do in memory? Massive sorts like the Terra sort? Or is it going to be you know, huge levels of applications who are going to be doing you know, OLAP type functions in memory? So I think from an SAP point of view, we actually have laid down the foundations for an in-memory benchmark. We've created an in-memory benchmark. We've tested HANA against Well, it. you have use cases. Precisely. So use you're cases saying themselves. here there's not, much, not many use cases yet emerged <laughs> here. I, I would say that the use cases ultimately will drive the workload of those benchmarks, but frankly, I think TPC needs to step up perhaps and, and, and actually author some of these pure in-memory kind of benchmarks. At the moment, you have this traditional go to disk, bring the data back, and then the whole concurrency piece that you have to worry about from a benchmarking point of view. Somewhat contrived, I think what we truly need to get to is use case specific benchmarks that allow you to be able to truly exercise what the engine is able to do. We were just talking about, I was just talking about another alpha geek, and. You know, it's cool to be a database guy now. No, I was uh, one of my tracks in computer science degree was database, and I never told anyone I was in database business because it's like, you know, no one was falling out of their chair. But now it's cool to be in databases. So we're talking about concurrency. Um, that it's seeing it's a transition in concurrency. Do you agree with that? That it's aging fast and and not aging well, 
that new kinds of concurrency is needed? So if you think of the typical model, it is um, transaction workloads are updating data. So therefore, the update model incurs massive concurrency overheads. If you go to an append-only model, and this is exactly what we're driving with HANA. So the notion is really that you think of the hot temperatures of data, right? So hot, warm, cool, and then cold. And over a period of time, data, when it gets cold, you, you essentially archive it off. But the problem with that is, of course, is that you need to then bring it back to hot data again. Some compliance check, for example, some regulatory report needs to be run. We have Glacier, which is Amazon's product. Mm -hmm actually call it Glacier, it's actually completely frozen. Yeah, so the <laughs> intent really is that if you really look at the, the, the profile of yeah. data, you need to be able to get to the point where you can bring back data into the Isn't that why again. some of the things are changing so fast? Because these, what you just explained, is kind of a new phenomenon. It used to be simple, you know, active data, passive data, archived. Sure. Now you have different classifications and you need low latency. Mm -hmm. And that is that that is that one of the drivers that's changing it's a lot It's going to become increasingly important to be able to balance write and read optimization in one single platform. Now, I don't use that word unification half-heartedly. We have actually got a very strong, credible platform, which is not encumbered by this technology debt that's been carried by a lot of the other vendors out there. They've carried this through because they've had to incrementally add new features to their database technologies. We've started afresh, we work with Intel, we've innovated in in-memory compute, we have a foundational platform which is very CPU cache aware, and our in-memory platform is built around that. You talk about concurrency, we've actually introduced new concurrency rules as you talk about that, not just classic MVCC multi-version concurrency, but also being able to go beyond that so you can look at the different dimensions of so data. Does that take into account Flash? Absolutely. I mean, Flash in, in one is just another medium of storage. So yeah, you look at it as just storage. No, exactly. No, no changes to that because of Flash. Some, some it just accelerates would, it. Some <laughs> vendors would argue and say <laughs> that's the panacea to all performance problems, <laughs> but of course they're still encumbered by says, that technology. It's debt. nice. It's, it changes the game, no, sure, no doubt, but it's not going to change anything with them. I mean, game. ultimately you're still playing catch up. I mean, because if you don't address the root cause, which is inefficient algorithms in those database processing yeah. environments, you don't really solve the problem. You get I.O. bottlenecks on one side. If you, sp if you solve that, you add more functionality. And CPUs are a big part of that too. You add more, you know, I have one, one person say, I'm not utilizing my CPU. Well, they want to, so they throw more analytics in, increases the I.O. bottleneck. So again, this is all kind of in flux. And uh, so it makes sense, let's take it up a notch. Okay, high level business value. Um, and this is not an SAP question because you kind of laid that at the beginning, but the value proposition for this emerging Hadoop community, you now are offering the big bundle, the, uh, the bundling packages to help this, these companies get in and you can work with your accounts, it's not confusing, I got that, check. Um, but for this ecosystem, what is that business value that everyone is striving for? Shoot the arrow forward for about a, a year or two. What's, what has to happen in this ecosystem for, for so the customer in order value? For the, th I think there's three things, right? First off, number one, the developer competence needs to be increased. I mean, everybody's comfortable. You said you did computer science in, in one of your sort of yeah, early, early 80s, parts yeah, of your life. Yeah, exactly, 80s, right? well, yeah, good yeah, for yeah, you, yeah, so yeah. did I. <laughs> old, old school. I mean, relational theory is great because, I mean, you don't need to be a grade A student to know SQL, right? Grade B students, grade C students pick up SQL. <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily be the case with map and reduce today. I mean, you've got to have yeah. a certain skill set. So I think developer proximity to these technologies and having the aptitude to be able to do this stuff. Second thing is, is really there's just too much clutter right now in terms of the number of vendors who have just renamed themselves as being become big data companies. We'd ought to almost be able to sort out the wheat from the chaff. Who is truly adding value to the infrastructure yeah. and who is just noise? That's why Schnabe, I think, didn't want to put the big data wrapper around their value provisions. I think at the scale you're running, I didn't think I think it felt a little cheap. Sure. Um, but although maybe relevant from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. Um, great. Well, final question, um, SAP. What's Sapphire going to be like this year for you Sapphire's guys? Sapphire's going to be, you know, it's going to be noteworthy as usual. There's going to be some good announcements coming out. You know, tens of thousands of people will, of course, swarm over across to uh, <laughs> to Madrid this year. Uh, we're feeling very good, and we've had a great Q th a Q3. Uh, we're gearing up for towards hopefully a good Q4 as well, yeah. and ending the year in a high. And, and we've got some great technology, some great business applications, and innovation coming out from the company. Well, we've been very impressed with um, Bill McDermott and Jim Schnabe because they've been friends of the Cube. But we've had them both on for sit-down conversations. Uh, great executives. Uh, I was a little skeptical at first on the co co CEO thing, but I got to say those guys have done a great job. Um, Bill's the you know, the, the sharp-dressed man, very articulate. Shinabe's the mad scientist who puts th the strategy together uh, in a good way. I mean that, <laughs> no offense, uh, meant that in a positive way. Um, crazy scientist good in a good way. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it, good to see you. We'll be right back with our next guest. That's SAP here at Strata, uh, integrating in with the emerging crowd, um, not, not playing, uh, play, are they playing nicely with everybody, doing deals? That's a good sign for the industry and good sign for everyone, including SAP. We'll be right back after this short break.